Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. Since our last episode, we have worked a little bit on just getting things ready to ship science off of Vulcanus. So I set up some rocket silos with requester chests we need to, I guess, put their requests in. Um, I'll do 50 of each. Whoop. Hit the wrong button there. You know, I think E should just skip to confirming. How often do you really need E in your typing? <laughs> 3 E 10 uh, rocket fuel. <laughs> I, I don't think many people are typing like that. Um, and I, I guess some of the functions, though, might have the letter E in them. Min, max. I don't know what all functions you can use, but... We'll go ahead and get all those placed, and then, unfortunately, I don't have enough of those prod modules. I think I put some somewhere that I need to steal back. Um, those are P1s. Can I leave any P2s somewhere? Here, here, here. I don't want these to be using up P2s. And I could have those in the rocket silos. So we'll replace that with P1. And then I need the uncommon P2s there to be in my inventory. Yeah, I think enter should always work and E should always work. In, and what I'm questioning now is even if you're typing, maybe it should work as well. All right, so these are all going to be automatic quests, so we're going to be able to launch a lot of things quickly. It actually looks like we're out of coal, but let's fix that. Oh, these three had a very small amount of mineable resources, I guess. leave room for beacons just because we can. I don't really know how necessary that is on a regular patch of ore. But, fine. So in this episode, we're going to be working on sending back science to Navis so we can get science done. And then, um, yeah, then we'll have cliff explosives. We can bring cliff explosives or build them here, I, I guess. I don't remember what they cost. We can probably just make them here. And then we can finally get a nice building area in all of this space. And what we'll do is we'll work on setting up ah, uh, uncommon big drills and foundries. So we'll set up recycling loops for those. We already have the orange science done here. And the derp is probably not done. but uh, And then turbo belt production, obviously, is something we want. Okay, this actually is almost done. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's actually collecting stuff now. The issue is the uncommon crushers and the uncommon turrets. We need the minimum payload thing to be fixed. Yeah. Um, and it seems that I need more of the uncommon crushers. Which, that's because this has a limit of everything less than 100. Okay, so we've got an 8% shot at upgrading. So if I make 100 more, <clears throat> that should be plenty. Because having uncommon crushers is actually quite nice. Um, I should probably set up a recycling for that at some point. Same with thrusters, even. Um, I want two... 30 more should be a safe bet. Having the uncommon grabbies is also kind of nice, but I don't think... The collection rate has not been an issue so far on my uh, stops. All right, so th what we're going to have to do now is send this home to get rid of the pink science and then send it onto Vulcanus. Why don't I request 
a bunch of Q2s while we're here. I still hate that you have to set the planet. I really am not a fan of how that all works. Um, Cause it, it, and it doesn't even default to the planet you're sitting above, so if you're trying to get stuff from the planet you're above, you have to change it every single time. Which feels really weird. Okay, so we don't have uncommon Q2s. <laughs> and it even changes- oh my gosh! So if you're on Fulgora, and then you change the common- uh, commonality? Uh, what do you call that? Quality? It then goes back to being requesting from Nalvis. Man, I'm not a fan of that. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. I should probably report that. That's that's like bug level. <laughs> bug level stuff right there. Uh, let's do 200 of these because I have about a million on the planet. Um, do I have like rare P2s enough to grab? Uh, there's only three of those on the planet. What about uncommons? Ooh, there's 55 on the planet. Okay, I'll take those. I'll take those. That'll help us get started on things. So... Yeah, we just need these to be a little faster. I wonder what the cutoff is. Someone's surely done some testing. What's the cutoff for crafting speed? Or I should say overall output rate. Because it's a mixture of crafting speed and productivity. That gets you another rocket before the first one's done launching. Um, there's got to be some sort of cutoff. It's clearly more than 1.3 rocket parts per second. Because at some point you've got the rocket done already when the previous one's done launching. And if you want to, like, keep that up, I wonder what the rate is. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, I went for four silos, because I've noticed even two is still kind of slow to get a bunch of stuff up to a, up to a platform. So four silos on Vulcanus seems appropriate. And... Yeah, cliff explosives. Oh, they actually need calcite. Interesting. So they they not only need Vulcanist science, but also need Vulcanist resources. It's also interesting that unlike Fulgora, Vulcanus actually has a resource that you need to ship back to Nauvis in the form of calcite. Because once you start wanting to use the molten stuff on Nauvis, you need the calcite to melt down your iron and copper. So we're actually going to need a ship, you know, entire spaceship fulls of calcite. Uh, which is interesting, because with Fulgora, there's not actually- I mean, there's Holmium, but there's no real felt need to ship large amounts of Holmium home. Because you can just make the things there. Though that could always be a strategy, is just ship... Uh, no. No, 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 I'm lying. You can't... You can't just ship the Holmium home and make EMPs on Nauvis, because you can't make EMPs on Nauvis. <laughs> you can only make them on Fulgora. So... Anywho, um... Are you done? Yes. Okay, so turn that off. Um... Go to Nauvis. We'll drop off the pink science. There. I wonder if, in fact, this isn't me wondering, this is me knowing. It would probably be good to put in a tank for the water. It would actually help a lot. And I think if there's an easy place, I could do that without munging up everything. I guess I could just put one down here. <laughs> I have no idea, Dave. 
Is it worth it to ship iron, copper, and steel from Vulcanus? I mean, you're spinning an entire rocket, which is a stack of blue circuits. I mean, with certain productivity levels, it might be worth it. But at least at core cost, you're spending 50, you're spending 2,000 copper to send up 1,000 copper. So it would only be worth it if copper is three times easier to get. So, I mean, I'm being very general, but like, you're spending two thirds of your copper, you know, to send up a stack of copper, not to mention the other things. But it is so much easier to make copper here on Vulcanus. So there's certainly something to be said for that idea. I don't know if it's worth it at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of fancy math you'd have to do on top of the things you can't do math on, which is like, how much effort is it? And is it worth the effort? Or is it just easier to mine copper on Navis? Now we are gonna want beacons of higher quality. So, let's see, the Hendrickson, are you, you've arrived? Why are you not getting rid of, oh, it is, okay. There it goes. Um, okay, good. So how much do we have now, once we're done with all that? Oh, we got 13, 15, we're gonna have even more than 15,000? Nice, okay. So we're gonna have plenty of pink science. What are we gonna need to research with that? We could do more blue chip productivity. That makes, it makes rockets a little cheaper. Think about it. Um, But really, there's not much left to do. I already did all of it. I mean, the only main thing is... No. Oh. oh, the Tesla weapons. Yeah, okay, sorry. I, I thought there was one more research I hadn't done. So we'll work on the Tesla weapons research. And then... Once this is done offloading, which it seems to be, then we can... So what is all requests satisfy? So that's the requests of this station, I think. Is there a planetary request satisfied, I wonder? I guess inactivity. You could make it wait for a minute without anything happening. I assume that resets when we receive items too. Yes, it does, okay. That's kind of helpful to just have those there and you can see the green bars filling up and stuff. Um, in this case, I don't care to wait for those. So we'll just head on to Vulcanus here. Lojo, are you saying getting into automating the interplanetary requests is confusing or logistics and feels slightly undercooked? I think I agree with you. It certainly is not... I will say it's not as smooth uh, as, the, as the vanilla experience of Factorio. There are some parts of Space Age that feel a little rough around the edges. It's definitely better than space exploration. So they've done good work making it better than that. It certainly, it's good that they kind of figured out how to, oh, that tree is just completely blocking me grabbing more Lodger bots. Um, it's really good that they made it kind of like trains because then it feels familiar without having to do anything crazy. And I think that's really good. Um, yeah, I need more copper cable, so let's get that going. I mean, I need to just do this better, but... For now, this will work. Once we have cliff explosives, we can build a little more nicely and organizedly. 
But for now, this will work fine. It's just a solid 60 copper cable per second. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Vulcanus is cool. I'm just, I'm loving this. Um, I can see why people think Gleba is the least favorite because like, Fulgora had some really neat mechanics going on and Vulcanus just has like this flood of resources. I think I was, I was listing it out in my head. I don't remember if I put this in the Discord or not, but if you list out the things that like both Fulgora and Vulcanus have and Gleba doesn't, it's a pretty big list. Thing number one on the list is just like, easy rockets like uh, rocket silos right you get pretty much everything you need to both make rocket silos and launch rockets very easily on Gleba and Fulgora do you get those easily on or sorry on Fulgora and Vulcanus you get them easily do you get them easily on Gleba no you don't you have to build everything from like iron and copper up the normal way right here you get shortcuts right you can cast the low density structure. So it's just interesting because it's like a lot of the things that you need to do, both for making basic infrastructure for your base, launching rockets back to transport things, having basic resources like iron, copper, steel. They're both very easy on Vulcanus and Fulgora and on Gleba, not so much. So I think that alone is already a pretty big deal. That's not even getting into a whole nother topic, which is enemies, right? Enemies are very easy on Vulcanus and Fulgora because, well, here, you still have to think about them once in a while, but only once in a while, and only when you want to go expand, right? You don't have to think about enemies otherwise. You don't need defenses of any kind. And the same is true on Fulgora, and again, not true on Gleba. You actually have to kind of deal with biters again on Gleba. And then on top of that, there's the fact that just bio stuff isn't inherently as cool to us for whatever reason. And I think most people kind of have this vague sense that like, ah, oh, industrial foundries making more metals or these cool electromagnetic plants making circuits. There's just something inherently really cool about this that people don't seem quite as attracted to like, oh, I farm some plants. Even though, when you get going with it, I think it is pretty cool, and, like, conceptually, my brain says they're all equally cool, but but then my heart, for whatever reason, does not long to go to Gleba. And I think a lot of people have said similar things. I don't think everybody feels that way. Like, obviously, there's personal preference in there. But it, I've heard a lot of people saying things that are similar to that. So there, there's just, there's enough reasons against Gleba that I think it definitely draws the short end of the stick. Derpamu, how's it going? How's it going? You were, you were lucky. You won the Patreon roulette. Uh, and so you got the next space platform named after you. This is the SS Derpamu with extra room for sorting. We have to figure out the sorting of these, uh these things we're gonna do it better this is gonna be the one that runs back and forth between Vulcanus and Nalvis once we get going but for now let us send down more EMPs more chemical plants more of those some recyclers all of those quality modules do I need anything else not really I'm making everything else here on planet um, yeah, I don't think I need anything from this list. Okay, so let's start with quality modules in the beacon maker. Do I want to use my rares up for this? Probably not. I'll just use regulars. Um... And why not? We'll we'll restrict these based on circuit condition. Substation. We'll go to 200. Is it a blocky contraption limping along through space? Um, well, it, I just copied our other design because it already worked and I didn't really feel like designing a new one yet. 
but it'll be slightly improved over the old design, the Hendrickson. Uh, and this is Beacon. Why is this not running? What have I done? What am I missing, y'all? It's got beacons in the output. The inserter... Target full. Ah, that's what I'm missing. Got it. Problem solved. Okay, so I figure some... A few... But see, even then, like, the uncommon substations are just not that great, right? Like, it's only one more wire reach. Which, when you've already got nine on each side, or whatever it is, it, it's nice, but it certainly isn't groundbreaking. It'll be things like rare beacons that are going to feel groundbreaking. For certain builds. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing I want to get going with is the rare... Uh, where did I put these? Or uncommon, at least. This is where we want the rare modules. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up a recycling loop. Um... So, um, yeah, this is where we need a combinator, which I already have something like this on Fulgora. I want to set it up so that we only recycle it if we have enough. Yeah, that's what this one is doing. Uh, sorry, I can't think and talk at the same time, apparently. Basically, I just want to recycle it if we have too many normals and not enough uncommons. So we're going to switch this out for foundry. Foundry. And then that will enable an inserter. Apparently, we have no combinators. Let's handcraft a few. And then that needs to be hooked up to a roboport. We're reading the logistics network. And then this is only going to enable if a green signal greater than zero. Okay. So then we don't need to limit this at all. Well, I guess we should limit it to the same goal, which is 50 uncommon foundries. Foundry uncommon is less than 50. Okay, so that should work for that. And then we do the same setup here, but we parameterize it. Copy, shift, click, click this, change that to big drill okay create click uh, i will change it to a hundred uncommon big drills though we want a lot of those we want a lot of those and copy this change that Common. Okay, we're gonna have to vastly improve our electric engine production for this. And then, I don't know if this will actually recycle fast enough. We might need more than one, but for now we'll just do one recycler. And that should get our supply beginning to flow. What's our quality percent on these? 12.8%. Now, I think I've already mentioned this once or twice, but we initially had this wrong for a long time because the game is wrong. 
the the factorialpedia lies to you. Let, let me let me explain. Um, they give you this little chart, and this little chart is not telling the truth. I don't think, because quality three modules give a 2.5 percent chance, right? Let me double check that. So I think it's like straight up lying to you. Yeah. So four of these is a 10% chance, 10% quality. However, this chart is telling you your chance to get an uncommon gear is 10%. That's not true. The total chance for quality is 10%, and that applies to the sum of all of these, not just uncommons. So it's actually only a 9% chance to get the uncommon, a 0.9% chance to get the rare, a point 0.09 to get epic and a 0 0.01 to get legendary and that all adds up to 10%. So it's very weird that uh, this chart doesn't imply any of that. So it, it, this is actually a misleading chart. It's just straight up wrong. Um, and to be fair, it kind of makes sense because here, like, it would be weird that if you're starting with a normal gear, you kind of end up having an 11.11% .11 chance to upgrade. Whereas if you start with an epic, you only have a 10% chance to upgrade because then your chance to upgrade something is actually changing depending on what tier you're starting with. So that is kind of weird um, if it did work that way. So it doesn't work that way. 10% means you have a 10% chance of upgrading the thing you're doing in some form or fashion and that 10% is split up among all the different possibilities you could upgrade to. But this chart, therefore, is essentially wrong. Um, so all that to say, this here, saying 12.8% chance, really I am getting more like an 11 point whatever percent chance to get an uncommon and then a small chance to get a rare. Right now there's no chance to get an epic, because uh, I haven't researched it, but yeah, you get the idea. Now, it still looks like I'm not getting enough coal, because we need a lot for oil. So let's actually make sure this belt is saturated. Hey, Fakey Fail, how's it going? Thanks for joining. I guess this one needs to go on both sides of the belt. Get that hooked up. So how many of these do I need to... Four would be enough for a yellow belt. So a blue belt needs 12. So this should be a full blue belt then. Um. <laughs> Radio, you wrote a tool to work out the chances. Yeah, I made a little Excel spreadsheet myself at one point. Especially because I was curious when you loop it back with a recycler, like if you're always looping back the normals, what effective upgrade ratio do you end up getting on uncommons? Because um, that's not so easy to do quickly in your head. Basically what I'm doing here, where I'm building up a, a baseline amount of regulars, but once I hit that, I'm always going to be recycling the regulars to get uncommons. And... That ratio, I can actually look it up. If I'm at 12.8% and I'm not upgrading the recycles, uh, let's see. Oh, problem is, can I find the sheet? Is that second combinator connected to the RoboPort? It sure isn't. Thank you for that. I also never set the requests on these robo ports, which is kind of funny. Um, so we need to actually do that too. Hey, Jetpack, thanks for the follow. Uh, Nuge, yes, the big mining drills can be used on Nabus. That's one of the big points of coming here, is you can then ship these big mining drills all over the galaxy. You can use them on scrap too, right? And they'll actually be helpful for scrap because they mine, scrap piles are, are small for how much they have, so you actually, having big drills will help a lot. Um, okay, so according to my calculations, if we have 12.8%, 
and zero percent chance to upgrade on a uh, on the recycling. Oh. That's supposed to be G6. I have my formulas wrong. Whoops. Uh, which probably means this is all wrong. Um, but it's around... Well, I don't even know. I don't have the formulas right, and I'm not gonna redo them now, because you can't even see what I'm looking at. <laughs> so. Can you put quality modules in drills? Yes. You can get quality ore. It is a thing. Alright. Let's set up drills. No, let's set up cliff explosives. Hold on. Let's ship. Let's... One thing at a time. Science. So we need... Uh, we should probably have space, like, at the beginning of our, you know, thing. So we know which requests are for space stations and which aren't. Okay. I'll ignore those for now. We're not setting up anything on Novus yet anyway. We're just focusing on the science. Um, 10,000 science. So yeah, that'll take all the science that we've made, which looks like we had over 10,000 actually. So that's great. Yeah, there's a lot of options with quality. As soon as you start putting quality in everything, though, it does come with a cost. I think a lot of people ignore this cost. You have to manage what to do with all of the the commons and uncommons and later epics and legendaries that you end up getting everywhere. And it's not, it's not just as easy as I just put quality modules and everything and move on with my life. You do have to manage it. Um, it's certainly, if your goal is to get trickles of uncommon and rare resources to be able to make, like, a power armor or a tank here and there, it certainly is the way to do it. If your goal is to do what I'm doing here, where I'm like, I want to make um, specifically only uncommon drills, then the problem with trying to do quality at the lower level is they're not going to come in the same ratios. Right? So, like, I'll get a different ratio of uncommon steel plates than I do of circuits. Because I, I will actually get more uncommon circuits because I'm going to already have a lot of uncommon wires and gears. So, essentially, you just have to make either everything, literally every intermediate, an uncommon recycling loop, or nothing. And then you just do the uncommon upgrading at the foundry level. So it's kind of a weird vibe. Um, it's hard to just do a little bit here and there if your goal is actually to make uncommon results. And in this case, like, I don't need all my steel to be uncommon or whatever because I'm going to be making a ton of turbo belts and belts don't need quality. So there's really no point in forcing all of my steel or, or tungsten to be uncommon because I'm going to need a lot of normal for belts. And then at that point, you might say, well, yeah, but why don't you just put quality in it and then siphon away the uncommons to use in these? And it's like, yeah, I'd get a few, but again, the ratios that I get off of each thing is not going to be the exact ratio I end up needing uncommons for both the drills and the foundries. So then at that point, I'm going to end up... get. I'll get a few from doing that, but I won't get a lot. And so, it really is just easier to do a recycling loop on the thing you want. So, uh, the rocket launches are going swimmingly, it seems. 
actually logistics bots that are the problem right now? No. Yes. Yes. It is logistics bots that are the problem. So, more bots? More bots. Goodbye, bitrate. Hey, Willister. Thanks for the kind words. I'm glad you've been enjoying it. What the heck? Why is there a hundred in a trash slot? That's weird. That feels very weird. Trash slot. How did we end up trashing some? I don't even know how that works. Uh, we must have 10,000 already. We do. Sweet! Alright. Go to Navis. Uh, let's set up our request on the old Navis here. I know that's in the wrong section. That's fine. Um... Set that up, change... Oh, you know what? I can probably just change this filter. To be both, both colors. Alright, and then... We need to set up our disco science here. To accept... More colors. Do I have a favorite planet so far? Hmm. Now there's a question. Let me first figure out how I'm gonna do this. Uh, let's see, so... We're gonna have four more color access for this. Basically is what I want here. So request your chest here and here. Those will be red. Request your chest here and here. Those two will be red. And then that does that. Okay. And then we want a whole belt reader. On that one, a whole belt reader on this one. And why not on these two as well? Okay. There we go. And then this condition will go here. Why didn't that work? Why is this not working? I'm shift right clicking, shift left clicking, and it's doing nothing. What's up with that? Odd. Does it need a wire? I guess it does. Oh, because we're measuring via wire, not <clears throat> circuit. Never mind. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Uh... Which of your children is your favorite? <laughs> uh, I think. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. I'll get. I'll get to the comments here in a second. So, regarding favorite planet, Fulgora is just so freaking neat. However, Vulcanus has surprised me with how awesome it is to just get the flood of resources that you get with Molten, Iron, and Copper being basically free. Uh, that's been cooler than I thought it would be. And I'm actually guessing Gleba is going to feel cooler than I anticipate. So, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to really like all of them, but I think, I think Fulgora is still slightly ahead of Vulcanus for me, and I can't really speak to Gleba. Um...
Yeah, Nuge, I think I think that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Like, if your goal is to just get some higher quality stuff in general, I think setting up your mining outpost with higher quality is a good idea. Um, if you're gonna make a lot of normal stuff and some uncommon stuff, I think only recycling, only doing recycling loops for the uncommon stuff makes sense. Because you actually end up subtracting from your normal output with quality as well. Like if 10% of things are gonna be upgraded, that means you've only got 90% output. Not to mention it prevents the use of prod modules and speed modules. Like when you do quality, you don't get you don't get to beacon your quality setups. So your build is gonna be five times as big to to do quality instead of prod plus speed beacons. So that's a really big cost. In the early game, it's not as big of a cost because you don't have um what am I trying to say? Like in the early game, it's not as big of a cost because you don't have good beacons and good modules. But once you have good beacons and modules, that actually becomes a very large cost, right? So that's worth uh, thinking about too. Now, I'm wondering if the belt, now that we're getting more colors mixed in here, I'm wondering if we need to be a little longer here. And why not add in a few more labs while we're here? You could start by making everything legendary, he says nonchalantly, as if that's not, like, going to be the most expensive process in the entire world. Um. <laughs> it almost looks like they're going downhill when the, uh... When it switches from a blue belt to a red belt like that. There we go. Okay. So that should work. And yeah. Look at this. Our, our colors are filling in. Ooh, I just realized there's an official order to the planets. I didn't notice this. Look at that. The official order... Vulcanus, Gleba, Fulgora. Now, to be fair, that is the same order that they are away from the sun. So that's that's kind of fine, I guess. But uh, cliff explosives are going to get researched. Heck yes. I might as well do these other cheap ones. I'll do the expensive ones later. But these are all only 500 packs. So we'll get all those done. And then, then what? Uh, so let's get ready to automate cliff explosives. What do I need? Explosives, barrels, calcite, and grenades. So I need to make explosives and grenades. Um, explosives, I forget. Coal, sulfur, and water. Okay. So... I am going to have to move these, probably, because this is good. This is good base space, but... Sulfur... And then... Explosives. What's the rate on these? Oh, I can feed 10 explosives plants from one sulfur plant. Got it. Um, there's water. Which we need to bring over. And then... What is this? The heck? Oh, right. Okay. That's fine. Um, I had some radars that were attached with cables all the way out there. I don't really care about that. 
<laughs> you th you think it'd be less crazy than I think with the right loops. Not not crazy, but less so. Yay! Cliff explosives. Uh, no, you you're right. It's it's doable. It's doable. Um. Okay. And then we just need the coal up here. And there's explosives and cliff explosives. <laughs> oh, and grenades. What's the, what rates are we talking about? Uh, it's almost fast enough to keep that going. So maybe I need two grenade makers. Like this. And then grenades also need coal. And iron, which I will import right here. grenades and then barrels should be super easy to just set up somewhere put some steel these are my first barrels in the entire game I haven't barreled anything yet oh and then calcite We couldn't have done that any more spaghetti, but that gets us cliff explosives. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Nuge, you're better off doing prod. I think prod is better than, than quality when it comes to science packs. Because you get more productivity than quality. And Productivity allows for speed beaconing and quality doesn't. So, the only real reason I know of to make quality science packs is for. Uh, what's the word? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Like density. Like, if you're shipping a thousand science packs, you get more science done if there are a thousand uncommon packs. But you're also, it's cheaper to just make 2,000 packs if you're using productivity. So, I, I don't know at what point density of science might matter, but if it does, then... Because you can always just do item stacking, too, with science packs, I think. Um, so, anyway. What am I looking for? Cliff. Ooh, we can do quality cliffs? Get rid of those uncommon cliffs? <laughs> That's funny. Um, Alright, so there's our cliff deconstructor. Alright, let's speed this up. a second and we need 10 for each I don't know part of me says I should do more than that but I'm guessing this will be enough cliff explosives it just just you know once it's run for an hour we'll be fine it's just gonna take a hot second to get rid of all this cuz yeah I mean we're gonna need a few hundred cliff explosives here to get rid of everything But boy, is it gonna feel good. Let's start with like our base. Our base in the middle of the cliffs. Our base. All right. Um. Boom, boom. Okay, that feels good. That feels good. Oh, the super force building. 
over belts to make the undergrounds is so cool. Because you're like, oh, I need a beacon. Boom. Super force build. It's wonderful. All right, what else did, what did we just research? So we got coal liquefaction done. Is this better than what I'm doing here? Oh, I need hell mod. Um, no, we can, we can do this. We can do this. Um, so coal liquefaction turns the steam is free, right? We get we get easy steam here uh, with this recipe. So I'm counting that as zero cost. And now simple coal liquefaction turns 10 coal and some sulfuric. I'm ignoring the calcite into 50 heavy oil. This turns 10 coal and zero sulfuric and technically the steam is sulfuric. What's the rate on that? I know I said I didn't care about this, but now I want to know. Um, 10 steam is one sulfuric acid and one one thousandth of a calcite. <laughs> so not too worried about that. Um, so 50 steam is five sulfuric compared to 25 sulfuric. So it's one fifth of the sulfuric and like one one hundredth of the calcite or something. And we get 765 heavy oil net out on top of some light oil and petroleum. Okay. So that's kind of a big difference. So we need to switch all of our coal liquefaction over to the real one. Uh. Will the real coal of liquefaction please stand up? And now we don't need to feed it calcite anymore. And instead of sulfuric, we need to feed it heavy and steam. So I'm going to have to shift all of this around. Ooh, how do we beacon this and feed it all of the fluids and do all the things? I think I'm going to go with the old version. Because this gives me room for beacons on the front. Because on this end, we're going to have to back off of the coal loading. And do one of these guys. I guess I could do beacons on the back if I do coal loading from the front. Yeah, there's really no room. There's probably a way to do it if you flip these. Maybe. We do that. And this. Then is there room? Mm, still not room to put inserters somewhere. I could do inserters here, but then the problem is the belt would need to be there and then there would be no room for beacons. Um, you know, I was thinking if the belt was here, can I somehow finagle things? And I don't see how I could. Yeah. Yeah, Nuge, when you finally time when you finally get time to play and make calculations, you can you can let me know. I'm sure I will do some of those calculations too at some point. At this point I'm kinda just enjoying not knowing some things, weirdly enough. Weird as that sounds. Um So I guess we're loading the coal in from the front. Oh, this gives me room for two lines of beacons? Oh, we're jamming. We jamming now. Look at this. All right, this is the way. This is the way, okay. 
So, the heavy Earl needs to go into a tank that loops with itself. And then we only uh, pump out. Do I really not have pumps requested? We do not. So then... We only do this if we have sufficient heavy oil. So something like 2,000 should do it. That makes sure we're always filling back up the input of heavy oil. And then steam is just this network, which I don't think these take a bunch. Yeah, 20 a second steam. These make 2,000 a second. Okay, yeah, we should be good on steam. Um, Oh, that's it. Okay, so then we build these. I guess this whole thing. And then... Coal goes there. This is one of those weird spots where, like, I actually need medium power poles. Because, uh... A uh, substation on this end doesn't actually reach, and they don't fit anywhere in the middle. Which is very odd. Okay. So that gets us a lot more heavy oil. Um, and then I need to handle the light oil and petrol. So... Those are unfortunately over here. So the light oil... Again, we need a, uh, a tank. And how do we want to do this? We only want to... Allow the cracking of the light oil if we have too much heavy oil. Uh, I might do my first radar. Um, and we're going to measure this heavy oil from that. Well, <laughs> punishment for criticizing uncommon substations. <laughs> oh, that's actually really funny. I did, I did set it up though. I could just use uncommon substations there. I even have some rares now. Um, yeah, that's that's really funny. Um, anyway, so we want to set this pump to go if heavy oil is greater than 20,000. So that means we're, we're doing good on, on oil. And then, and then this one should only crack once we're doing good on loyal. And that, oh shoot, that shouldn't be the one. This is the output that needs to be linked. Uh, no. Mm. Yeah, this is fine. It's fine to set up the same source for cracking and for 
or rocket fuel because we will only accept petroleum if we have a lot of loyal anyway. So we hooked this up and we say we only do petroleum if loyal is greater than 20,000. So this is basically what we do on Novus and this just guarantees that we are getting enough of those things first. And now we want to hook up the petroleum to the petroleum. That's steam. What am I doing? Petroleum's right here. Okay, so now all the petroleum's hooked up. So now we're gonna have the issue of too much petroleum sometimes. So now we need this weird petroleum solid fuel recycling deletion system, but only if we have enough of the others or not, not enough of the others. So this is a delete petroleum Break glass in case of emergency. Um, oh yeah, that's not gonna work. Mm. Oh, and I never hooked up the heavy oil. Either, all right. Um, Okay, so this is something we only want to run if, what is, oh, that's an offshore pump. Okay, so that only runs if, the heavy oil, no, 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 sorry. We need a decider combinator. Uh, combinator. This is so nice now that we can do this. Um, basically, we need heavy oil to be low. Say 3,000. And light oil. No, no, no. Or light oil to be low. Uh, we're gonna have to do multiple settings and petroleum is high um but that's gonna need to be two separate conditions here i wish you could pipette a number like you can pipette symbols but not numbers So we need that to be true or that to be true. Um, in either case, we want to pump stuff. So that's connected to the radar and now we need to get the radar signal also connected to our light oil. And we need a petroleum measuring tank. Shipping spoils. We've introduced spoils. Uh, different kind of spoils, but yeah, basically. All right, so that's good. This hooks up to here. Now, what? why is everything all stopped up? Because the loyal here is not connected to the loyal down here. That's fair. Um, we'll just hope for the best and spaghetti the pipes. Should do it for 
Advanced oil cracking or coal liquefaction. Oh, and then we need to delete this. Technically, I'd be extra efficient if I used this solid fuel instead of the other solid fuel from the light oil for when I needed rocket fuel, but I think at the end of the day, it's not going to matter. So I'm just going to set up one of these. Nice little deletion recycling. And this only enables when green is green. Alright. I think I did that right. And now. I just need a couple more of these guys. this we've got some attacks here let's just make that easy on ourselves all right the Did I forget to connect anything else no I think we're good Spaghetti all the things! Oh, it's already been an hour and six minutes in this YouTube video. Well, at least we got cliff explosives done. That feels pretty dang good. I'm just gonna continue widening our cliff destruction radius here. And yeah, I think with that, we'll call it the end of this YouTube episode because we've destroyed cliffs, and we're capable of destroying many more. Um, it is kind of slow. Uh-oh, I ran out of sulfur. Why is that? Oh, because of the petroleum issue. That should stop once the heavy oil and light oil tanks are filled. That's just taking a minute to do that. So that should be fine. But uh, yeah, so as always, for those of you watching from future YouTube, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you'd like to support me making these videos and many more, head over to patreon.com slash or join the Discord and hang out with us. It's a great place, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.